Hi, today I want to talk to you about electrode placement, whether it's for a TENS unit, whether it's for an interferential unit, pulse scale venic, uh, unit, anything but muscle stimulation. Muscle stimulation is a different world. What people want when they get a TENS unit or an interferential infrax type unit for pain, they want somebody to give them a cookbook. They want to see a picture of the body and my knees hurting, my shoulders hurting, my neck hurting, whatever, where do I put the electrodes? It's not that simple. One of the things that happens, and I want to explain to you the only purpose of electrodes. You have an electrode of any shape or size, and let me just give you an example. When somebody gets a TENS unit, they usually get an electrode that's like two by two. See the size of that one. They may have a low back problem. So if they have a low back problem, they may get what's called a butterfly electrode. You can see that on the side. You look at it over here and you can see the surface area. That's ideally set up for the spine here and then on each side. That's called a butterfly electrode. There's also somebody that may come up with low back pain or they have had what they would have surgery, a thoracotomy. So they've got a large area, of big, big area. There we use these types of electrodes where you can put on each side and stimulate. That's another set of electrodes. But no matter what electrodes you are using, there's only one thing that really matters. That is, wherever you put electrodes, it's done simply. If you have pain, say in your elbow, and you put an electrode here, and you put an electrode here, the thing that matters is wherever you're feeling pain, that's where we want to target the electricity across. It's like a, an, a target, and you're setting the, the actual scope, and right in the middle is your pain. So we have one here, one here. We know electricity flows there, goes through the pain area. Now, the closer you put electrodes to each other, the less you're going to feel it. That's why electrodes directly beside of the spine usually do not work well. So you spread them out to give some more distance, and it's just because you can get more sensory nerves. Now, originally, way back in the 60s, 70s, everybody wanted a simple book as to how you do it. This is a book came from Medtronic. They quit making them years and years ago. But we used to get, every time we'd buy a couple of 300 units, they'd give us 100 books. Let me tell you how this works, though. This is a picture here on what's called a coon, C-U-N. What a coon is, is on, your on each person's hand, this spot right here, the distance from here to here, is a coon. Now it is measured, it's consistent for each person, no matter what their body type. Tall, short, wide, skinny, that's a consistent. This was one of the charts that was done in which it shows you right up front how long one is, one coon. Here you can see across the hand, three coons. And then you get to different spots on the body and you say you measure it so many coons. Well, that's an anatomical reference. And that was usually done where you were having an acupuncture type application, not an electrotherapy application. Much of this stuff comes from China where they were doing acupuncture, not as much electrotherapy. But here in the United States, and any time you're doing an electrode placement, the one thing you really need to remember is we're always trying to target the area you're feeling pain. We can do it with two electrodes. We can do it with four electrodes. We can do it with long, skinny electrodes that you saw. We can do it all sorts of different ways. We're just trying to stay on target so that the sensations you feel go into, the, into that area. Now, let me give you one little tip that we used to tell doctors, phys physical therapists, chiropractors, so on and so forth. Easiest way in the world, and the easiest way we tell patients when they're trying to figure out, where do I put those electrodes? Couple things happen. You can go down to Radio Shack anywhere and order an ohm meter, five, six, eight, ten dollars. Uh, all an ohm meter does is it measures the resistance on your skin to electricity. You can reverse that and measure conductance, what conducts, and there's spots. This is consistent across humans around the world. What goes on though is in order to find these spots, that, and especially with chronic pain, there are certain spots on your body that will conduct electricity greater into your body than others. If they won't conduct it, it's called resistance. If they will conduct, it's called conductance. 
One of the things we would do with any pain patient, let's just say I'm having elbow pain. You go up to the patient, you literally palpate, or you as the patient yourself, palpate, big fancy term, makes me sound like I know medical stuff. Truth is, I'm just pressing, that's all that's going on. Take your finger, and you, especially in chronic pain, you press a point, oh, that hurts a little bit. One spot hurts a little bit. My next question to you will be, describe to me how it hurt. So let's say I press there and you went, whoa, that hurts. You know what, the pain's running down to my hand. That's a good place for an electrode. Now remember, when you're using electrodes, that's a lot bigger than a needle. So you, you don't have to be as exact. You can be in a, a larger area. So you put an electrode there because that was very sensitive. Is that the best place to put it? No. One of the things that happens is that one, yo, because that hurts down there. I want to find a better point. So we start pressing. Whoa! Jumps off the table. That hurt. Well, how did that hurt? Gosh, it went into my elbow. It shot up my shoulder. It went down here. If we took an ohm meter or something measuring conductance and we measured that spot that we just palpated, we just touched, you would find out that is the most conductive point anywhere in that area for electricity. Now, when you apply electricity over that point where it radiates in different areas, what happens is the patient, you the patient, you feel that stimulation, be it interferential or be it TENS, you feel that stimulation in the target area, the area where you're feeling pain. That's what we're, that's what we're always after. Boom, that goes an electrode, treat, it goes in there, your pain level is subsides. Now, if it's a TENS unit, as soon as you turn it off, it might go right back up. But if it's interferential, you'll bring it down here, you turn it off, and it'll stay there. It may gradually creep up. Now, I will tell you, if you wanted to look at the electrical phenomena that goes on here, that spot was very conductive. And let's say, just for sake of argument, when all around here has a resting potential of minus 110 millivolts, blah, blah, blah. All right, the number 110. When you got to that point, that might be 200. Other points would be 150, where it radiates in one area. But electrically, the body will change over time after you've treated on this very point that's hurting. And you know this as a chronic pain patient. Pain moves. It's not the same place every day. It's not the same place during the day. You go back and measure that. It's just like the surrounding tissues. It's not very conductive. But your pain level has gone down. That's a generic across humans all over this world. That's the way our body responds to electricity and that's also the pattern that occurs with pain. You have high intensity pain, you stimulate using the points I've told you about, pain in the middle, what happens? Pain subsides. Now, if you were to press down here, that might be more sensitive. And this morning before you started your treatment, that wasn't sensitive at all. But now you've subdued the immediate acuteness of what's going on, then these other secondary places start developing. But there is no magic to electrode placement other than where's your target? You've got pain coming from there. It may be almost unbearable. We're going to put electrodes, wide, narrow, so on and so forth, bring it together. Now, last thing on electrode placement, when you're using interferential, like the infrax, because with infrax you can do TENS or you can do interferential. Because you're getting so much more energy, you generally don't want to use two by two type electrodes. You want about a three inch rail. There's only one reason for that. The surface that's touching you is where electricity comes from. If you try to condense it to a small area, that unit's going off and on 8,000 times a second. A TENS unit's going off and on 150 times a second. There's a lot, and let's compare it to water. That's, if you're trying to put 8,000 pulses per second, if you had a, a shower head and you only had a very small hole and you try to cram 8,000 in it, you can't stand in the shower. You're going to jump away because that's too much pressure at one spot. Electricity works the same way. With a TENS unit, 150 times a second, that's plenty but not with interferential. You want a larger electrode there. And it's only because this creates what's called current density. But compared to the shower head, 
8,000 times 150. The way you make the shower comfortable with the same amount of pressure, instead of having one hole to shoot at you, you put 200 holes. And then you're dispersing that water. It becomes comfortable. You like it. Electricity works under the same precept or concept as what I'm describing in the shower head. So if you're doing interferential treatment, you use a larger electrode. For tens, two by twos are fine. Hope this helps you. Folks, it's no more complicated than what I said. And I hope I didn't make it complicated, <laughs> but it's still target, aim it, make sure you got the right size, go with it. The only thing we're trying to do is wherever you feel pain, we're trying to subdue it. That's what electrode placement is about. Thanks for watching.